Yo, what's up squads? Welcome back to Regal Randy's Ranch. On today's episode, you'll be joining me while I take care of some well-needed maintenance in the 2x8. I'll be watering the evil grimace and citral glues, correcting some deficiencies, and anything else the plants need to transition smoothly into flower. We just dropped the new sleek line, so if you want to support the channel, grab some merch and help me fund my never-ending addiction of buying seeds. And with that being said, let's jump right into it. So, a quick overview for those who haven't been here before. There's a citral glue on the left and two evil grimace strains on the right. They're clones from our outdoor run last year. If you saw that grow, you'll know why we kept a bunch of these girls. If not, check out some of the previous grows on the channel. They're in a 2 foot by 8 foot grow space grown under a Spider Farmer G4500 LED grow light. It fits perfectly in a 2x4, but I didn't have any spare ones so I threw it in this. Also, this video is sponsored by Spider Farmer, so make sure to use code REGAL7 for an extra 3% off site-wide if you're planning on buying one of these. Since they need a little more light, I threw in an SF1000 on the end. And they're currently being grown in 10 gallon fabric pots, and have been lollipopped and scrogged. They're looking good, but they're a bit dry, so we're gonna water them. And there also seems to be some type of deficiency or something, so we're gonna check that out as well. At first glance, it seems like the light could be a bit too close. I've been keeping the light 10 inches from the canopy at 40% power since the defoliation to give them time to stack evenly. But now that we're a couple weeks into flower, it's time to increase the par to around 700. The 2x8 doesn't overheat. It has good ventilation and it only gets to about 72 degrees. But to prevent light burn and a high leaf temperature, I'll raise the light higher to about 15 inches. The symptoms that this plant has been having looks like a potassium deficiency. Potassium deficiency can cause weak stems, stunted growth, lower yields, and make the plant vulnerable to all sorts of environmental stresses. Sometimes a low relative humidity can cause a potassium deficiency by inhibiting the plant's perspiration. Potassium can also get locked out from having pH troubles. So I'll check on the pH using the Blue Labs pH pen. If you're wondering why this looks a little different from yours, that's because this is a soil pH pen. It can test both liquids and cocoa or soil mediums pretty easily. You just poke a hole with this protective sheath, remove the probe, and stick it in the hole. As long as the pen is calibrated and the soil is relatively moist, it will give an accurate reading within 15 seconds. I have a whole video on how to calibrate pH pens here, so if you want to make sure yours is on point, check out that video. Since the pH is a bit low, I'll add some dolomite lime to raise it. Dolomite lime is a good source of calcium and magnesium, and acts as a soil pH buffer. I'll add it to the soil at a measurement of 1 teaspoon per gallon of growing medium. Since these are 10 gallon pots, we'll put in about a quarter of a cup, and then mix it into the top layer of soil. It will take a few waterings to take effect, but this will ensure that the root zone is the correct pH to uptake the potassium that's in the soil. Careful not to put too much in, as an overabundance of dolomite lime can cause the soil to become too alkaline, and it can become difficult for the plants to absorb essential nutrients. When I go to water, I'll make sure to add some water-soluble kelp. Kelp is a great source of potassium and helps to regulate soil pH too. And after this TLC, the plants should be in better shape as they make their way into mid-flower. One thing to note is leaf damage caused by potassium will not recover, so watch the new growth carefully for several days to make sure there are no longer signs of a deficiency. If that doesn't fix the problem, I'll use this rapid test digital soil tester I got off Amazon. It tests the NPK levels in the soil as well as the pH, and if that doesn't work, I'll send a soil sample to get professionally tested at a lab. While a digital tester only tests for a few things, a lab test can test all that and more including salinity, soil texture, and organic matter quantity. It can also give a much more detailed report of macro and micronutrients compared to the digital at-home tester, but that's to be expected as each one of the soil tests costs about $30, while the at-home tester costs $30 and comes with enough capsules of reactant for 5 NPK and 10 pH tests. And the replacement capsules are only 30 cents each. I don't know how accurate this is, but even if we don't use it this run, I'll make a video on it testing its efficacy. Now let's water the dolomite lime in and see if these corrections balance everything out. So everyone was asking what I use to water my plants with in the videos. 
It's a two gallon Vivo Sun Sprayer. I take the cap and plastic piece off so it allows more water to come out. It makes watering very easy because I don't have to reach as far and it's light enough to carry upstairs to my other grow room. I bought a couple of these and they've lasted a few years. I use some for watering and some for foliar spraying. The ones I use for watering, I remove the tip, but if I'm using it to spray insecticide or foliar sprays, I'd keep the tip on. You could upgrade to a metal one if you'd really want it, but it's not needed. What is needed is making sure you take the time to really let the water soak into these 10 gallon pots, because if you drench one spot, they'll spill right out the bottom. Good watering practices are just as important as what you put in the water. 10 gallon smart pots are a little bit harder to water because you have to make sure the medium is evenly saturated. Larger pots can take longer to dry out and if you have spots that are bone dry while other spots are still moist, the beneficial bacteria will go dormant in those areas and your plant won't uptake as much nutrients. When I grow organic, my water only contains a few basic things. Saponin to help spread the water evenly throughout the medium. Great white. I add my Corazai to keep the beneficial bacteria population high, molasses, which is food for the microbes, and Rapid Start. That's a root enhancer and it works well with Great White. It brings my pH down to 6.2 to 6.8. And in this case, some water soluble kelp to add some potassium to the soil. We want to make sure these plants are healthy and ready for day 21 of flower, where I'll do the first of two defoliations. The second one happens on day 42 of flower, and it's not advised to defoliate them any more than that. You want the plants to have as little stress as possible and spend as much time growing, especially during late flower where the plant spends most of its time bulking up. If you don't follow these guidelines, you'll be robbing yourself of that quality harvest you've invested all this time for. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how this grow is turning out. It's been very easy the whole time, and I was kind of scared to grow in this 2x8 again because we had some difficulty getting into the far edges last time when growing the banana split from Pops, but lollipopping the bottom has definitely made it easier to manage these plants and take care of the growing area this time around. We'll check back in on these plants later in flower. Remember, we always have a bunch of giveaways going on, so join the Discord and go to the giveaways channel and enter as many as you'd like, or download some free guides about growing, washing, pressing, and everything related to that sticky flower. Thanks for stopping by, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out squaws.